So I just realized that I've been wearing my pants backwards all morning and I was aimlessly walking around my room, my house, looking for my water bottle when it was in my arms the entire time. This, my friend, is the energy of Mercury retrograde. We're going to be talking about what it is, how it can affect you, and what to do about it so that you don't do this. (laughs) It's like I'm taking my own advice here. Anyway, I'll tell you more. Stay tuned. Welcome to Spiritual and Ambitious. I'm your host, Whitney McNeil. I'm a certified medium and spiritual teacher, and I help spiritual and ambitious souls just like you live your life purpose through your career and attract abundance by connecting into your intuition and spirit guides. Let's get spiritual and ambitious. I want to give a shout out to Two Tarot. I love this podcast. It's easy to understand actionable information that can really make a difference. I've been listening for several weeks and have made changes in how I work with spirit and my business based on Whitney's teachings and have already seen and felt improvement. I am so grateful for this wonderful resource. Thank you, Two Tarot. I appreciate that so much. For all our listeners, I'd love to invite you to this brand new giveaway that we're doing between now and June 6, 2022. Here's how to win a reading with me. Go to instagram.com forward slash messenger of spirit and follow me. Then comment under the latest post and then DM me and say hi. And when you do this, you'll be entered to win a reading with me. It's a little mini reading. I love this. Basically, you're going to get the chance to ask me a question and I'll do a three card reading pull for you. But you know, I love to delight and surprise. So I'll probably be pulling more than three cards. And I record this in a little video and send it to you. So you've got to be at least 18 years old. And I'd love to see you over on Instagram. So I have been actually recording podcast episodes all morning and I love it. And when I do it, it's almost like I'm channeling from my spirit guide. So I have a tendency sometimes to get a little bit ungrounded. And I realized that I've been wearing my pants backwards all day, darn, because I thought, oh, did I lose weight? It's like so roomy thinking to myself, well, what's the difference here? I realized I just totally had stepped into them the wrong way. And then I spent a couple minutes looking for my water bottle all around my room and my bathroom, trying to figure out where it was. And I was actually holding on to it the entire time. So that reminded me, hey, guess what? We're in Mercury retrograde. So what is Mercury retrograde? Well, it is as if the planet Mercury goes backwards. It doesn't really go backwards, but it looks like it does. So from where we are, it looks like this optical illusion that it's going backwards. And you may think, well, why is it that that would affect anything? It's not even real. Well, from experience of years, my friend, it's real. Mercury has to do with communication, technology communications, for instance, travel, old things, like old things you haven't healed, loose ends that you haven't tied, old beliefs and patterns, and old relationships. My husband, Chris, owns his own IT business. And he will ask me time after time, hey, honey, I've got all these things that aren't working for all of my clients. Is it Mercury retrograde or something? I'm like, yep. (laughs) You just can't make this stuff up. I've seen this with clients in the communication fields and things like that. And it's like, hmm, let's make sure that we're really paying attention when this happens so that we can see the wave coming versus it coming and us not knowing and knocks us off of our game. Now, I'm not going to go too deep in astrology, but when you know where your Mercury is in your chart, this can be really helpful to understand how it might affect you a little bit more. And then you also want to pay attention to which Mercury retrograde is happening and where it starts and where it ends. So for instance, right now, Mercury retrograde starts in Gemini and ends in Taurus. So people of those signs might be a little bit more affected or people that have their Mercury and those signs might be a little bit more affected. 
But what's interesting is Mercury retrograde also has a pre-shadow and a post-shadow. So it is in fact longer than just three weeks. And I've already started to notice Mercury's presence. You know those people that say your reputation precedes you. Mm -hmm. That is Mercury retrograde. A lot of people fear it and they're like, oh my gosh, my life is going to suck during this period of time. Now, I cannot tell you that it is going to be rainbows and roses. What I can give you are some tips to help you navigate this with your spirit guides. So let's just talk about what it can affect. Mercury retrograde can affect travel. So for me, I am actually traveling during Mercury retrograde and I have What's really interesting for me is so far it's worked out, meaning when I'm traveling, a lot of times I'll be traveling back home to my family or to places I've been before. Generally, when you are visiting a place from your past, it's pretty aligned with Mercury retrograde, but I'm going to make sure and double check that my dates are correct, that my times are correct. I'm going to give myself lots of leeway to travel down there ahead of time so that if anything goes wrong with travel, that I give myself plenty of time to make my flights, et cetera, et cetera. This is also a great time to make a packing list and make sure that you've double checked everything before you've left. Double checking is something that can be really, really helpful as you navigate this time. Now, in business, you may really want to make sure that you are rereading all the things. One of the things are contracts. I actually just had to sign a contract a couple days ago, and we were coming down to the wire about when it would start, and everything that we had talked about wasn't in the contract. And it was a Friday, and I thought, oh my gosh, I can't get a hold of the person. This contract's supposed to go in effect Sunday, and like we're not going to be working over the weekend. I'm sure this person isn't either, but I'm really glad that I reread the contract because it had to do with me paying yearly and one lump sum versus monthly, which is what we had agreed to. So anyway, I made sure to contact this person. And even though that person wasn't available, someone else was and got the contract straightened out. So make sure to not just say, oh yeah, I'm sure it's fine to really dive in and look at the details. Now, another thing comes up with communication. Ooh, I almost want to just put the covers over my head with this. For me, I tend to be more of a direct person. I really, really care about people. But the way I can come across sometimes to people is a little direct. And I don't mean to be. It definitely has something to do with my energetic makeup. I'm really, really authentic. So I don't really beat around the bush. I know that some people are like, you know, hey, we have to kind of talk about all the niceties and make sure everything's worded so eloquently. And for me, I'm one of the people that is just like, let's cut through the crap and like get to the point. I'm like this in personal relationships and I can be like this in business relationships. But I try so hard to make sure the person knows I'm so nice (laughs) because I really don't intend to come across so direct. But what happens (laughs) in Mercury retrograde especially, it's like people's sensitivity can be really, really tuned up. So if I say something, somebody can take it the wrong way. So I have to make sure I'm really clear and concise in my communication. And I try to go the extra mile with making sure that the person knows I care about them. This happens a lot, especially with me and water signs. I am a fire sign. My sun is a fire sign. My rising sign is a fire sign. And what's interesting is my moon is in Virgo, which by the way, Mercury rules. So it's a lot of directness. So I'm extra aware that I can offend people when I don't mean to. So it's a great time to really make sure you're clear and concise, but also details. So in business, if you have some directives to give to some people on your team, or even not in business, but with your spouse or your partner or your friends and family, making sure to be extra detailed about what it is. Now, I see when retrograde comes around, the biggest miscommunication that I tend to have is with my husband. I will say one thing and he'll nod his head and he's like, yes, yes, I get it. And then he does the exact opposite and it's silly stuff and the same vice versa. 
And it can be something really silly, like let's say heating up lasagna. He might say, did you turn the oven on? Be like, yeah. And he'll say, okay, we need to put this in in 20 minutes. Well, all of a sudden he's microwaving the lasagna. And I'm like, I thought we were putting the oven on. And he'll say, yeah, for the bread. I thought you were going to toast the garlic bread. So it's just making sure that we're really detailed in what we're saying to the people around us and even more so like describing things. And it can feel like it's a little bit more work, but it is necessary. All right. So stay tuned after this quick break. And I'm going to be talking about other places that you might find mercury retrograde lurking around in your life and business, but also how to navigate it. This episode is sponsored by my free spirit guide masterclass. Inside, you'll learn the five C's of spirit guide communication, your role with your spirit guides, two proven effective strategies to stop second guessing yourself and your intuition and the single most important step to understand your intuitive guidance, along with four ways to perceive your spiritual intuitive messages. You'll also be getting a workbook to go through this class as well. You can join at messengerspirit.com forward slash free class. Thanks so much for listening. If you want to connect with your spirit guides, I'd love to see you in the masterclass. So happy to have new dates and times. And of course, we're linking to it in the show notes. Okay, you might find Mercury Retrograde brings light to old things that need to be healed. This can be old beliefs, old patterns, old relationships. Let me dive into that a little bit more. So communication can happen between people who have had, let's say, unfinished business. And this can be actually really healing if you can bring closure to whatever the issue is or whatever the situation is. So just really asking for, okay, how can we resolve this? You know, how can we basically put this to bed? That can be really healing. But also you might find old patterns come up that you thought were put to bed, which is so annoying. Let's just be honest. I mean, I know so many people in the spiritual place are like, it's so healing. And it is, I agree. But we can also say it's annoying because it is. Things that maybe you've gone to counseling for, maybe old arguments that you and your partner have, or you and your family, you and your friends, maybe old ways of thinking where maybe you thought you got past it. I know so many of you that are listening are recovering or recovered people pleasers. So maybe one of your old patterns is starting to say yes to everybody when you really knew that you should have said no. So that could be something as an example to help you understand patterns. Old belief systems, maybe imposter syndrome is coming up where you're like, I can't do this. What? I'm a failure. There's no way I can do this. Or maybe you can look at these belief systems and your spirit guides are trying to help you remember things that you believed years ago that you kind of forgot. And this happens a lot. I work with members inside of my program Aligned, where we align to our intuition, our spirit guides, and we are really committed to staying on our path and our purpose. And sometimes we just get a little off of it. And then all of a sudden, we need a little jolt and a reminder to go, oh, yeah. Oh, wait a minute. I need to get back into alignment. I used to believe that. And how did I get off this? It's kind of that place where we just feel out. We're like, nothing's working. I don't know what's going on. I don't even know how I got off this path. But now I remember how to feel. So one of the things I was actually talking about in a meeting with them was how we can get into this place of pushing, pushing, doing, doing, going, going, and the worry train. You know, those 3 a.m., things that you think about or the stuff that you can't fall asleep because you've got all the things in the world coming at you. Like that worry place. I don't know how to do this. How's this going to work out? And then when, if we can just shift back into alignment where we go, it's okay. I'm going at my own pace. I'm going at my own time. My spirit guides have my back, that kind of stuff. Then we feel like we're in a much better place. So just knowing that it can be for the positive, In fact, it's always for the positive. We just can perceive it as annoying or helpful. Now, here's one that can crop up. Old relationships, people that you went to kindergarten with, 
people that you went to high school with and old flames can message you and say, hello, how are you? And you get to decide if you want to continue that connection or not, because it is not always helpful. Some of these relationships will pop up and it's already been completed and there's no need to continue. Some relationships may come up from the past where you go, oh my gosh, I was just thinking about this person. How are you? What's going on? It's really wild how this happens. So you can have a friend who you drop off with for years and then you come back at the right time. I have had a couple instances where when I started out on my spiritual path and I said, hey, this is what I do. I'm a medium, la da da la da They didn't agree with it and they dropped off. So then years came back around and we kind of found each other again and they had had their own experiences and now they were more accepting of it. There are other situations though, like old flames, where if they're an old flame, it is for a reason, most likely and that there's nothing else there to do. So just kind of understanding where in your life these things can happen and how it can affect life and business. So an idea might come up in business that you've already revisited, but you have told yourself you're never gonna do it again. This is an opportunity if it pops back up and you start going, hmm, should I do this again? What I recommend is to remember why you didn't want to do it in the first place and reevaluate and see where you are now. So we're getting into how do I navigate this crap that comes up? Well, one is we can change our perspective. I think it's important to acknowledge our human emotions because we cannot bypass it, right? If we think that it's annoying, let's just say it. But we can also still see the positive side of it as well. So whenever an old relationship comes up, an old unhealed pattern, an old belief system, or an old idea, it's coming off the back burner. It doesn't mean that every single one of those are bad. Doesn't mean every single one of those are good. So an example is years ago, I started to write a book. Then I put that book down for years. And then in a Mercury retrograde time, I was reminded of, Whitney, you had this idea to write a book years ago. Do you want to do it? The same happened with Oracle cards. When I started doing readings years ago, I wanted to have my own Oracle card deck. And then I put that idea down for years and it has come back up. In fact, last year it came back up in a Mercury retrograde time. I had to look at those ideas and say, Do I want to do them again or do I not? And guess who I called on? My spirit guides. So I asked my spirit guides, hey, what's up with this? (laughs) And they basically said, hey, Whitney, it's kind of like we took these ideas from the storage closet. You know, they were shoved in there. And Mercury Retrograde is a great time to revisit these things. So as they brought these ideas, it was like, hey, we'll help you with these, but do you still want to do them or not? And I really looked at those ideas. I was like, hell yeah, I want to do it. And so we are. In fact, my Oracle card deck is coming out really soon. I love them. I'm already starting to use them in digital form inside of my programs for students. But we will have them in physical form soon. Now for a book, I said, hell yeah, I want to do it. Finally, my idea shift and changed a little bit, but I've hired a book proposal coach to help me so we can submit this idea out to agents and publishers. So just letting you know that not all your old ideas are bad and your spirit guides can help you. It's basically like, hey, we're reminding you. Your spirit guides are really helpful in bringing stuff that you need to clear out because basically if you're shoving shit in your energy closet, then you're really holding yourself back. You're kind of bogging your energy down and it needs to be a bit lighter. Now, when situations come up with communication, one of the things you can do, if you know you're going to have a conversation with somebody that feels a little sensitive, you can always call on your spirit guides and ask your spirit guides to help give you the right words. Now, it doesn't mean that the conversation is going to go amazingly. It means that you're going to say what it is that you need to say. This person could learn a lesson from you and also trusting in that process. But calling in your guides 
asking for the highest and the best in the situation. Now, if somebody brings an idea to you or an opportunity, which your spirit guides are here to present an opportunity, even if it's an old opportunity, one of the things that I recommend is allowing yourself to process before you answer. Now, if it's a hell yeah, then that's great. Like, go for it. I don't think that we have to say, I cannot answer you until Mercury retrograde is over. What I do feel that you can do is give yourself time to process it and just take a moment, take a beat. There have been many decisions where I've had to take some time to process for energy to come through. And I just talked about my Oracle cards, but that's a great example. It wasn't even in a Mercury retrograde time period, but I was working on another project and I had to decide about the cover art. Nothing felt right to me. And finally, after I let some time pass and I shifted some stuff out of my energy field, then the answer came to me. So this is the same with a decision that you have to make with anything. Sometimes you need a little extra time to process it and give yourself some space. Last year, I had several opportunities around retrograde time where I was going to work with one of my mentors. And also I had an opportunity to co-collaborate with a book. They were great opportunities. And I dragged my feet on them because I wanted to say yes. But really, once I processed it, I had to say no. And I had an intuitive feeling, you know, I just don't think that I'm going to be able to commit and I can't tell you why. So I'm just going to have to say no. And it turned out that I needed a second surgery and I would not have been able to honor those two commitments. Now, my spirit guides aren't going to necessarily come out and say, you're going to need a second surgery because I never would have gone ahead with the first one. So understanding that it's okay to take a little time to process. Now, this next tip that I want to give you is really applicable for every single thing you do, even when you're not in Mercury retrograde. Ground. Allow yourself to be grounded. For me, I'm recording all these podcast episodes, but before I go and do anything else today, I'm going to make sure I ground, get back into my body, feel my body, all that stuff. So one of the best ways that I really like to ground is to put my feet on the floor and just feel my body. Like I kind of do a little little massage up through my legs and my feet. I can breathe in through my feet. So I imagine when I breathe in, I'm breathing the earth's energy up through my feet. And I also like to go outside. There's a lot of other ways to ground and maybe we'll do a podcast episode on that. That was one of my huge topics of grounding that I just could never ground for years. So maybe we should do one. Let me know. Tell me on Instagram if you want me to do a podcast episode on grounding. And when it comes to travel, like I said, or any kind of projects, anything that you know that you're going to be committing to, do as much planning as you can in advance. Now, you cannot control everything. And in fact, I've got an episode coming up talking about planning your life and business from your intuition. But plan as much as you can in advance so that you are feeling more confident. So you might even want to plan for a plan A and plan B. Okay, how does that work? So for me, we're going to be going to the airport this weekend. Well, I got to make sure that I leave extra early because it's in retrograde time. And in fact, we were even talking about which cars. We have a brand new car and we have an older car. And I said, you know, which one are we going to take? <laughs> so I said, you know, if we take the older car, then it's retrograde and we haven't had maintenance on it in a while. So that's something that you can do. Make sure you've got the car maintenance and all that stuff. But you might be wondering, but like, how does this affect me if I am me and I co-create my reality with my spirit guides? Trust me, you are energy and your spirit guides are here to help. But there is also the pool of energy that you're living in. You're here in the universe. You're here on this planet. And all the other planets definitely have energy that affect this one. I don't believe in giving up your power and just throwing up your hands and saying, I can't do anything. My life is now just based on my astrology or X, Y, Z. Oh, no, you are a creator, too. But it's really important to know the energy that's around you because sometimes it feels like energetic soup. Sometimes during retrograde, it feels like we can't talk to our guides as clearly because it feels a little foggy, a little murky. And that's because there are old stuff coming up from your energy field that need to be cleared. It reminds me of clearing pipes. 
When you work on the pipes, the water runs a little bit murky before it is clear. So this is more of an awareness of what are the energetic forces around me? Okay, what are my desires? Mm, Okay, and then how can I utilize my spirit guides who are my navigators through this energetic field? And it may create a little resistance and it may help you pivot so you can flow more. In business, you might revisit an idea and decide what to let go of, what is no longer working for you, whether it's the people that are working with you or your idea or your service or your offering. And that is okay. Now, as far as a new idea, well, retrograde may not necessarily be the best time for new things, but you might have a new idea. And what I would recommend is sit with that and process it a little bit before you go full force into it know that this is more of a time of release and let go and clearing. So think about, ah, I can use retrograde as a clearing, things that need to be healed and shifted and removed from my energy field. Knowing that your spirit guides are always trying to help you. They're always conspiring in your favor. They are here to help you work with your purpose and your own energy and alignment to it. And also helping you find the path of least resistance with the energy around you. Now, that doesn't mean that you won't go over a few speed bumps. All right. I am sending you good vibes if you wish to receive them. During this Mercury retrograde time, take a deep breath if you notice it. We are actually in retrograde from May 10th to June 3rd, 2022. And then we have a post-shadow, June 4th through the 18th. That post-shadow kind of just wraps things up. It's almost like, hey, are we integrating these lessons? We need to go ahead and shift forward now. We're out of retrograde, so let's make sure that we've learned them. Okay, I've got a brand new episode coming up next week. I hope that you connect with me over on Instagram and enter this giveaway. Remember to follow me on Instagram comment under my latest post and DM me and say hi. You can find me at Messenger of Spirit. All right, until next week, here's to staying spiritual and ambitious. Thanks so much for listening to this episode. And if you loved it, would you please share it with a friend? I would also love your review and a reminder to subscribe so you never miss an episode. You can find me at messengerofspirit.com and you can take the four intuitive languages quiz and find show notes there too. If you want to connect on YouTube, Facebook, or Instagram, you can find me at Messenger of Spirit. If you want to continue the conversation, join my free Facebook group at messengerofspirit.com forward slash group. I'll meet you right here next week. Here's to stand spiritual and ambitious.